Now, I hopped on here earlier and talked about Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals and my thoughts on how it might go. And never in a million years did I imagine that we would get the blowout that we got in this game. Uh, early on, it looked like it was going to be a back-and-forth type of game. Uh, Miami went on a little run and went up. And then the Boston Celtics put on the clamps and went on, I want to say, like a 60-27 to 27 run from that point on to make the game a blowout before halftime even. It, like, it just felt inevitable. And the Heat would like try to cut it to 18, to 15. And then Boston would just tighten the screws again. And before you know it, they win by 25. They're going back to Boston with all of the momentum. And genuinely, I did not think that getting back both Marcus Smart and Al Horford would lead to this. I thought the teams were still pretty evenly matched, but this was just everything working uh, for the Boston Celtics. This was the team that we saw from January uh, 2022 onwards. Like, they, they absolutely looked like they were on another level compared to Miami tonight after, you know, such a back-and-forth type game for Game 1. Uh, so Al Horford cleared health and safety protocols. Marcus Smart was not at 100%, but gave it a go anyways. And I got to say, if he's not at 100%, he's looking pretty damn good despite it. Uh, finished with a near triple-double tonight, 24 points. 12 assists, 3 steals, a block, all of that defense on display, 9 rebounds as well. But the big thing for me here with him is 1 foul and 1 turnover. So you get all of that production with just 1 foul and 1 turnover. When he's playing defense at that level, not committing the fouls, that was another huge difference from, from Game 1 to here. In Game 1, Jimmy Butler shot 20 free throws by himself. Game two tonight, the whole team, the Miami Heat, shot 22. So I don't know if it was a different officiating crew to swallow their whistles or if Boston was just better at, at you know, playing straight-up defense, not falling for those, those uh, I guess, traps, for lack of a better word, not falling for those easy fouls that you can get. But this looked like a completely different Boston Celtics team. And for the Heat... This was kind of just a worst case scenario where every single player that was not named Jimmy Butler had issues. Um, Jimmy Butler, 29 points, uh, pretty efficient as well, like 11 of 18. So continues that hot scoring streak that he's been on, but everyone else just struggled mightily. Bam Adebayo, six points. Tyler Hero, the, I think, second worst playoff plus minus for a bench player uh, in history, I believe, with a minus 33 um it just all around it was just a bad a bad display for the heat but it's not like the heat came out and like missed tons of wide open shots or anything like that like boston made it hard for them to do anything they were all up on them and that's something that i really really underestimated was the boston celtics ability to switch when they have their full starting lineup so Tatum Brown, Marcus Smart, Robert Williams, and Al Horford in the starting lineup tonight. That is what you want because everyone can guard everyone. Horford may be a little or older, but he can still switch and he can still close out and he can still make it a difficult shot for anyone. So to have all of that versatility, to have Marcus Smart playing like that, to have Robert Williams back without seemingly any um, lingering issues related to that meniscus injury, and the knee soreness that kept him out in uh, the last round. Really, it's just been, like, this is exactly what Boston wants. They ride back into, into Boston with all the momentum. Uh, one big thing here that could become a bigger thing, depending on what it is, is Derek White missed this game for personal reasons, which were never really, like, delved into, which it's personal reasons, so we don't need to know. But he's one of those dudes where even if he's not shooting well, um, which he does have those hot and cold nights, but if he's not shooting well, he's still giving maximum effort. He is a very, very uh, energy type player. So on defense and fighting for loose balls and things like that, like he is a natural energy guy. And not having that, Ime Udoka ended up running a seven-man rotation tonight, which playoffs, you're going to see lineups start to tighten up. Um, in the words of the great Chris Vernon, you don't want to play guys who suck. <laughs> just don't play guys who suck if you want to be a good team. So 
as it gets closer and closer to the finals, I think teams are going to, you know, tighten up those rotations, get more minutes for their guys. But for Boston, seven is, is cutting it a little close because two tonight that they leaned on were um, Peyton Pritchard and some more Aaron Neesmith minutes, only seven minutes tonight. But a, this was really a, a team effort all around. Um, Grant Williams continues his ascent into, like, greatest player on earth like if someone was just watching basketball now for the first time they'd be like are these boston Celtics? is this the greatest team that's ever existed watching marcus smart do this jason tatum super efficient 27 points 8 of 13 shooting grant williams was a plus 37 <laughs> in 32 minutes and peyton pritchard was a plus 39 in 23 minutes like that's insane uh for the heat I don't really know where you go because their their depth is one of their strengths. Uh, P.J. Tucker is going to be evaluated for potential injuries, so don't know his status. And like I said in, in one of the other videos, he's really like one of the, the pulses of that team. So it's going to be interesting to see if it ends up um, impacting Miami further with like that, that just enforcer type player. But like I don't think that the answer here is like, oh, let's switch and put Duncan Robinson in more. Let's give so and so more minutes. Like this really feels like this is going to be something where the way for Miami to do this is to to you know just trim the rotation down one or two more players. I guess this was garbage time, but like tonight, twenty six minutes for Oladipo, twenty four for Tyler Hero, fourteen for Duncan Robinson, uh, who continues to just struggle shooting, just can't find a rhythm, but. I don't think it's fair because I think as this keeps going, if, if, you know, say game three in Boston, the crowd is rowdy. It's another, you know, lopsided Celtics victory. I think the noise is going to get even louder of people criticizing the heat for giving Duncan Robinson that contract. But like Duncan Robinson, like he's not going to say no. And then, you know, he's asked to do a specific thing in on the team. Like, he's asked to be the role player that comes in, and I believe he's told a story where he said, they've said to him, like, you take threes. If you, like, dribble and drive in, like, we want you shooting threes. So you can't bring him into the Eastern Conference Finals now and be like, we need you to shot create. Like, it's just, it's not his thing. If your choices on, if you're worried about defense and your two choices are Duncan Robinson or Tyler Hero, Tyler Hero just won six man of the year because not only can he score in in volumes, but he can create shots for other players. He can move off the ball a little bit smoother. He has more to his game because there's more that they let him do in the offense. I'm not. I think Duncan Robinson could probably do it all, but it's not fair to him to one criticize him for not playing when it's just the team's decided they don't need that role right now. And two, it's you can't expect him to learn or to learn or to do that in this situation. Like, he's he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. It feels like he's a popular um, popular point that people have been um, leaning on to to get across the like, man, Miami's in shambles. They don't know what they're doing. They they gave him all this money. And now he's just sitting there, and it's like, I trust the Heat. I trust Pat Riley. I trust Coach Spolstra. I would imagine they knew what they were doing. And they knew that this was a possibility, but I don't know. I, that's just that's an argument I I can really envision hearing a lot of in the coming days, uh, especially if Boston wins another one or two. If they win these two home games, like it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, other than that, I'm not too sure really what the Heat um, can do because like it's it's all hitting shots and free throws, and if Boston's playing with that intensity and they're switching like that. Really, all fill or all uh, Miami can do is kind of just muck it up and like make it a, a lower scoring game, make it harder for Boston to get those shots. Like if it comes down to it, and the final of one of these games is one hundred two to ninety five or something, like I mean, at this point, it kind of favors either team. I'm shocked that this first that the first two games have had as many points scored as they have. I think that's a testament to the talent of these players. Um, but I, I really think as it goes on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to plummet into the 80s, 90s for scores. Which that definitely favors Miami too. I don't know if this increases the, hey, we need Kyle Lowry talk. Um, we'll see you know what his status is. Because if he's not 100% and he comes in, that's got bad news written all over it. Um, so I would imagine they're not 
telling him to, you know, eat his Wheaties and get ready to try to tough it out because that doesn't help anyone. So we'll see what happens with him. I think bringing him in is just one of those veteran presences that can steady the ship, uh, take a little bit of the load off of Jimmy Butler, let Tyler Hero do a little bit more off ball as well. Um, just because he's got the experience that dudes like Gabe Vincent and Max Struess don't. Uh, even Victor Oladipo, I think, they might. Uh, you, we might see him doing a little bit more uh, creating for guys because, you know, he's he's getting those those minutes over Duncan Robinson and, and those types of players because he brings more on defense. But I would imagine that they're going to need to get the ball moving a lot more, especially if the Celtics continue to switch like that. If they're switching like that, then Miami has to keep the ball popping so they can try to get as good a quality look as they can or just generate enough time for them to for someone to cut to the basket, for someone to find a lane, for anything else to work. And that's something that Kyle Lowry is really good at. He uses his that thick butt and he just like makes space whether it's for himself, whether it's to set up a lane for a teammate, like he just knows how to use his body and put players in positions to benefit. So I think that might be, you know, if he comes back, they're going to probably just look for him to facilitate over anything else and over being a scoring option. But I would imagine more Victor Oladipo minutes with the first team, maybe at the sacrifice of one of uh, Gabe Vincent or Max Drews. I don't think he's going to go straight like into the starting lineup or anything. I'm not saying that. But I think that it may be a little bit more like, okay, we need someone else out here that can create, can defend, and can can score when they need to as well, just to give Boston different looks. Because if Boston can send, you know, Robert Williams at Max Struess, like you gotta you gotta like Robert Williams in that in that instance. So I don't think this is like a, a series that's over. I think Boston really showed something tonight that I mean, we knew they had, but I was surprised to, to see that emphatic statement and that they kept the door shut and they never let the heat ease back into it or make another game of it. Like the second half, it was just waiting for it to be over at that point. Like all of the suspense was gone. Boston did a masterful job taking the air out of that building and that just pushes them into this game three with that much more momentum. So be really curious to see what happens now that it shifts to game three in Boston. Hopefully Derek White can come back. Um, Kyle Lowry as well. I'd love to see these teams at full strength just to see what it looks like. Um, I don't imagine every Heat player is going to have a bad game again, but if Boston plays like this, then you know they can beat anyone. So I, I can't say it would shock me for them to just continue this, this level of two-way play. Um, as well, so for tonight, Friday night, we have Game 2, Warriors and Mavericks. Mavericks have to really be trying to avenge uh, Game 1. I can't wait to see what Jason Kidd has um, as far as adjustments for Dallas, for attacking the Warriors, for getting around the Warriors' defensive strategies. I'm really excited to see that. I think it'll be a, um, hopefully a closer game because it feels like these, these playoff games have all been blowouts uh, so far. Uh, especially, you know, dating back to the last couple games of the last round, just feels like everything's been decided by, like, the third quarter at the latest. Other than, um, well, no, not even. I think game six, Celtics Bucks was the last one that was, that was like, a close man down to the wire type of game. So, who knows? Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, game two tonight, let me know your thoughts either, on either series, really, what you, what you expect to see as it goes on. Uh, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, enjoy the game tonight and peace.